Hi, this is Professor Barker. We're going to be talking about chemo today, and it would be best this time if you follow along in your book, start on page 221, and use your highlighters and um, highlight some stuff, take some notes, and we'll get started. Before we talk about what chemo is, we need to talk about what cancer is, and I have a simple three-word definition, abnormal cell growth. And you can look that up and there will be more things added to it depending on what source you use that invades tissue or whatever. But just knowing that it's abnormal cell growth is what you need to know for right now. The reason that the abnormal cell growth occurs is because these cells undergo what we call a mutation. Now, if you're into the X-Men, then you might think, ooh, mutations are good. But that's not the case. Normally, mutations are bad. And in fact, probably, oh, probably 99.999% of mutations are bad. They make the cells or whatever not do their job as well. Every now and then there is a mutation that for some reason helps the organism do a little better. And that's how we get into survival of the fittest and evolution and all of that. But anyway, cells undergo mutations quite frequently. But the reason that they don't stick around is because our cells are designed, our DNA has um, a whole bunch of instructions, and two of those things that are built into our design are quite handy. And one of them is a crowd control type option, and the other is a self-destruct button. So all normal functioning cells, in, on top of what they normally do, they also have this crowd control and the self-destruct button. So the crowd control is the what tells the cell that um, there's enough, it doesn't need to divide anymore, um, and then when there's a, another cell dies and there's an empty space, then somehow the cell knows it's, it needs to multiply and fill the space. And so somehow cells can normally sense when they're in the right amount and when they're overcrowded and that sort of thing. The self-destruct button is kind of what comes in handy when a cell undergoes a mutation. Cells know when they're not like they're supposed to be, and so they will self-destruct, take one for the team. When cancer occurs, the mutation takes out this one and two, the crowd control and the self-destruct. That's part of the mutation is those two things no longer function. And so the cells multiply out of control. They don't realize that they're invading tissue. So they just keep multiplying and multiplying and multiplying. And even though they don't work properly, they their self-destruct sequence no longer works. And so they don't kill themselves or commit suicide like most cells do when they see that they're not properly functioning. So both the crowd control and the self-destruct don't work on cancer cells. That's what makes them cancer. So when we're talking about ways to um, get rid of cancer, we talk about anti-neoplastic agents. And when you break that down, anti means against, neo, new, so anti-neoplastic against new tissue formation. There's three main ways that we um, get rid of um, tissue that we don't want, surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy. At the very end of this chapter, we're going to go into radiation a little bit, but because it's pharmacology, we're going to spend the bulk of our time talking about chemotherapy. Chemotherapy and radiation are both considered to be cytotoxic, meaning cyto is cell, toxic, destructive. So destructive to cells is what cytotoxic means. And you can see, let's pull this out a little bit. Rapid, rapidly reproducing cells are called proliferating. And one way that we talk about that sometimes is we say multiply like rabbits, and you can see in my picture. Um, that's how you multiply like rabbits. But chemotherapy and radiation both are designed to only be cytotoxic or destructive to rapidly proliferating cells. Most of the cells in our body are not rapid reproducers. They just only reproduce when one of them gets too old and dies. So that makes chemotherapy a real targeted type of treatment because it only goes after these rapidly dividing cells and we just previously talked about that's what 
cancer cells do. Their um, crowd control button doesn't work and their auto destruct button doesn't work. So they are um, reproducing very rapidly. Unfortunately, there are a few body cells in our bodies um, out of the trillions or billions that we have that do prolifer proliferate rapidly. And most of those are found in the three areas that I've highlighted here. Um, the first you see is skin and hair. And I'm going to use this symbol of this um, female with the roundish orange hair. Whenever you see that symbol throughout my slide presentation, know that I'm talking about skin and hair. Skin and hair cells do proliferate rapidly, and so chemotherapy doesn't know the difference, so it's going to attack those skin and hair cells just like it does the cancer cells. And so that's why um, alopecia, meaning hair loss, and weird rashes and very sensitive skin is going to be one of the side effects of chemotherapy. Then you see the bone. Whenever you see the bone throughout my presentation, think about bone marrow. And we've talked about this before with anti-infectives and with HIV. And the bone marrow makes RBCs, WBCs, and platelets. And again, it's a rapidly proliferating cells. And so those things that are made in the bone marrow, unfortunately, get knocked out when we're using chemotherapy too. So other side effects, um, decreased RBCs is going to result in anemia. And um, anemia usually causes someone to feel very tired. When anemia gets too bad, we're going to treat it with um, a blood transfusion. WBCs, we talked about these a lot in HIV. When um, WBCs go down, your ability to fight off infection goes down. And so people receiving chemotherapy are what we call neutropenic, or they're very susceptible to opportunistic infections. And then finally, platelets are what make your blood clot. And so people receiving chemotherapy are at risk for uh, thrombocytopenia. Thrombocytes and platelets, basically the same thing, just two words for the same thing, and that means that they're at a risk for hemorrhage or bleeding or bruising. And then finally, you see the stomach over here, and there's two parts to the stomach. Here I have listed the GI epithelium, meaning the, the lining of the stomach, the intestines, and then also the mouth and the anus. All of those cells reproduce rapidly because, you know, stomach acid is pretty strong stuff, and that's how we're able to have a, an organ that contains all that stomach acid is that the lining of our stomach and our mouth and everything that's involved in digestion replaces itself real often. And so normally that works well, but unfortunately chemotherapy, again, doesn't know the difference, so it's going to attack these areas um, just like it does the cancer cells. And so that's why other side effects are going to be the nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and then um, very sore mouth mucous membranes. So that's the other main side effect that you're going to see with all chemotherapeutic agents. So um, the hair, the bone, marrow, and the stomach are all going to be side effects of every chemotherapeutic agent pretty much. The first category that we're going to talk about are anti-metabolites, and you can find those on page 222 and 223. Anti-metabolites. Now, the first time I gave an exam over this, there is a matching part, and it had all the different types of chemotherapeutic agents. It had anti-metabolites, alkylating agents, mitotic inhibitors, and anti-tumor antibiotics, and students had to match them. And I'll be darned if the matching part to anti-metabolites wasn't this, rapidly proliferating neoplasms. And I have question mark, question mark, question mark after it because I thought that was the worst definition I've ever heard of anti-metabolites. And of course, I wasn't wrong. Over half my class missed that. And so I know, you know, on the next exam to change it, but I did want to put it out there because since it was on Cengage as, you know, in their software, it, you might see it elsewhere. So whenever you see rapidly proliferating, and if you have to choose one, um, go with the anti-metabolites. And the key is this metabo looks like metabolism and that will maybe help you remember um, proliferating you know metabolism speeds up a better way to think of anti-metabolites is this way so here we have a pig and he's being piggish you know eating everything and when you have these rapidly proliferating neoplasms 
that's what they're going to do too, is they're going to eat and eat and eat. And what a metabolite is, is when a person eats food, then that food gets broken down. And when it's useful for cells, it breaks into what we call metabolites. Okay. And so metabolites are just the part of food that cells can use a real simplistic definition. So an anti-metabolite is like fake food. So we're going to fake the cells out. They're going to think that they're getting food, but really they're getting this this plastic food, but because they're so piggish and they eat everything that they come across, they don't know, they don't care, they take in the fake food and then they can't grow and they starve to death essentially because they're eating this fake food instead of the real food. So that's really a better explanation of how anti-metabolites work. We have, um, there's more than just three, but I've listed the three that I've heard the most of. Um, methotrexate, Fluorocyl, which is more commonly called a 5-FU, and then ERA-C. ERA-C is not in your book, but I did see it on um, like the Evolve NCLEX prep, and so I went ahead and added it here. Here we have, again, I told you, when you see this, think um, skin and hair, so alopecia, hair loss, rash, photosensitivity. You have the three biggies with the bone marrow, leukemia, anemia, thrombocytopenia, and, of course, the vomiting, diarrhea, Anorexia just means loss of appetite. So all of those that go with every single chemotherapy agent are going to go with anti-metabolites too. And a biggie on here is the ulceration and bleeding of the oral mucosa and GI tract. That seems to be a little bit worse with anti-metabolites than with some of the other chemotherapeutic agents. And so that's why I highlighted that. Before we get into alkylating agents, let's look and see what questions Evolve has that um, for NCLEX prep that have to do with anti-metabolites. So here's our first question. This one has to do with ERA-C. Like I said, it's not in your book, but it is in the Evolve. Client with acute non-lymphocytic anemia receives the treatment with cytarabine or ERA-C. The nurse reinforces medication instructions to the client and tells the client that it is important to report which adverse effect to the healthcare provider. So our choices are nausea, anorexia, headache, and sore throat. So nausea, Anorexia, that went with our stomach, right? And that's going to be with every single chemotherapeutic agent. There's really not a lot of difference between those two, so I'm going to say not one of those two. Headache, I don't remember seeing that on our thing. Sore throat. Sore throat can mean two things. It can have to do with, like I told you, with the anti-metabolites are particularly hard on the mucous membranes, like in the mouth. And also sore throat can have to do with infection. So that's what I'm going to go with. And we are right, our rationale says, um, the major effect of ERA-C is bone marrow suppression, or depression, sorry. And so sore throat is always going to be an indicator of um, when you have low WBC, something you have to pay attention to. We talked about this with AIDS and HIV, that sore throat, it might mean strep throat, and someone without a good immune system can die from strep throat. This next question, I didn't go into what leucovorin is, but if you look on page 223 of your textbook in the little blue, uh, yellow box, you'll see it. Our question is, a client with lung cancer is receiving a high dose of methotrexate. Leucovorin, um, also a type of folic acid, is also prescribed. The nurse who is assisting in planning care for the client understands that administering leucovorin is for which purpose? And if you read on page 223, it says... Leucovorin is a reduced form of folic acid, and it's used as a rescue agent following methotrexate administration to reduce the side effects of methotrexate-induced hematological and GI toxicity. So, preserve normal cells, that sounds pretty good. Promote DNA synthesis, no, it doesn't do that. Promote medication excretion, no, it doesn't do that. And promote synthesis of nucleic acids, and it's a little beyond its capacity. But preserve normal cells, that's what I think it does. It um, provides the... Um, Folic acid is one of the metabolites that cells need, so the real food. And so it's going to give real food to the real cells while the um, cancer cells are gobbling up the fake food. The last question I saw had to do with fluorouracil. A client with cancer has received a course of chemotherapy with fluorouracil. Nurse should plan to reinstore reinforce which instructions. Visit a flu clinic and receive an annual flu vaccine. No, they... Um, Flu is, maybe they need it, but they should not get any immunizations without healthcare approval because of the WBC thing. 
and rationales right there. Again, they need to always consult their doctor.